Well, in this uh, session of our True Talk this evening, I want to uh, focus on a verse of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 3. It simply says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so I want to talk in this session about blessings, gifts from God. Blessings, gifts from God. I hope you notice there from Ephesians 1, 3 that the Bible didn't say that God is going to bless you. It says that he has blessed you. He has blessed you. He has blessed you. Now, you don't determine what God has done based on how you feel. Because oftentimes, you can be blessed and not know it. In fact, you don't know how blessed you are until you see somebody else in worse shape. And then when you look at what you make, then you start realizing somebody else would die to make what I'm making. And we're complaining about it. So you can be blessed sometimes and not really know it. The Apostle Paul, speaking to the church at Ephesus, is writing to them and says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed. He has already done it. Lay your hands on yourself right now and say, I am blessed. blessed. See, God blessed you. God blessed you. You're already blessed. You're not trying to be blessed. You're already blessed. You're already blessed. Uh, When a child is born, they're already blessed with gifts. They're not trying to be blessed with the gift. They already have the gift. Every person who's a natural born singer is born with a gift. Now, gifts can be developed. They can be sharpened. But you're born with a gift. There are some people that are born with the gift of cooking. Anybody know anybody that's got the gift of cooking? It's just a gift. You, you just, it's as though you're born with it. God has already blessed you. He's already blessed you. And your blessing is not contingent upon how you feel, whether you feel like you're blessed or not. But you know, just like during the holidays, everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants a blessing of some kind. But the truth of the matter is, again, is that God has already blessed you. Look at somebody else now and tell them you are blessed. See, I want you to realize you're not just saying words. You are speaking in line with what God says that he has already done concerning you. He has already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ, every spiritual blessing. And and here's what I want you to understand. A blessing is an instrument of God's love. A blessing is an instrument of God's love. God loves his children, so he blesses his children. A blessing is an instrument of God's love. Whenever God blesses you with something that you don't deserve, it's just an instrument of God's love. You get blessed. How many of you all feel that you have been blessed in some instances in your life and you know you didn't deserve it? But you you, you see that it was an instrument of God's love. It was just an instrument of God's love. God was just showing his love to you manifesting his love that I love you in spite of you. It it wasn't because of of you. It was in spite of you because God blesses us as an instrument of his love toward us. You know why? Because it is God's nature to bless. It is God's nature to bless. When you are blessed, you can bless others. Now, if If you're not blessed, you can't bless others with something that you don't have. So listen, each day I pray this way. I said, Lord, make me a blessing. It's just just that simple. I don't have to pray, Lord, bless me. I simply say, Lord, make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. If God makes me a blessing, he's got to bless me. He's got to bless me to be able to bless somebody else. And he's got to bless me with more than what I need for my own needs. He's got to bless me with more joy for me to bring joy to somebody else. 
He got to bless me with more words than what I need to be able to bring a word to someone else. He's got to bless me with more peace than what I need in order for me to impart peace to someone else. So when God blesses you, when he makes you a blessing, he's empowering you to be able to share with others what he has given and entrusted into your own life. Because I want you to understand this, that God's ultimate goal in blessing, blessing us is far more than simply making us happy, making us peaceful, making us protected, making us prosperous. It's far more than just about you. God is much more. His, his plan is much bigger than just blessing you. Remember, you are blessed to bless. God blesses you to be able to bless others. He's got a bigger plan in mind. You're going to be blessed in the process now. You will be blessed in the process. But I want you to understand this, is that it is never the Lord's intention for his blessings to end with us. It is never the Lord's intention for his blessings to end with us. That means you never sit on a blessing. You don't sit on a blessing. The blessing is not supposed to end with you. God desires that we become a fountain of blessing to other people. I want you to notice uh, what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3. Notice this. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Now, notice how he's speaking to us. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. God blesses us with salvation. That's for us personally. When God personally saves you, that's for your joy. That's for you. But I want you to notice St. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Notice this. He who believes in me, Jesus says, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Yeah. Now notice this. Old King James Version says, out of his belly. Out of that innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Now listen, now Isaiah 12 mentioned about with joy we would draw waters out of the well of salvation. Water is in the well for one purpose, but water is in the river for another. The water that is in the well of salvation is to bless you and your house. You know, in the country, there were people before they had running water. A lot of folks would have a well in their backyard, and they would go and they would draw water from that well. That was for that, their house. That wasn't for the whole city. It wasn't for the whole town. It was for that house. It might have served two or three houses. It might have served a neighborhood, but it was mainly for those right in the immediate vicinity. That was for them. But now, I don't know anybody so bad that they own a whole river. The river is not just for one person. And notice, he says, out of your heart, out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural, rivers, yeah. rivers. This is, a, this is that blessing that has a never-ending source that flows out of God. Now notice, remember, if you go back to Isaiah 12, 3, with joy you draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's for you personally. That's for your household. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your house will be saved. So the water that's in the well is for the salvation of your household. That's for your salvation. But then the water of the river, the water that flows out of your spirit, that flows out of your heart, that's for everybody that you meet. That's for the whole city. That's for the whole town. The rivers run through states. Rivers water whole nations. If you ever get water that's in the river, the river is for the nations. And so it flows out of your belly, out of your spirit, out of your heart come the rivers of living water. So God wants you to be a, a wellspring of a river flowing out of your spirit. That's why when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you get hooked up to the eternal source. A spring can start bubbling up on the inside of you. I don't know whether you've ever gotten into a spirit of prayer where you begin to pray and you begin to pray and something starts building up on the inside of you, charging on the inside of you, and you realize that 
this is more than just about me. Oftentimes when you get an anointing to pray, that's not when you're praying just about you and your little own your selfish needs. God is anointing you to be able to pray for somebody else. That's a part of that river flowing out of you to be able to bless the community, to be able to pray for folks in distant places, to be able to believe God for an anointing to deliver somebody's son or daughter off of drugs out of a sexually promiscuous lifestyle to be able to have a, a prison sentence averted. You don't know what you're praying for, but you can pray according to the Holy Ghost because there is a resource of water that's way deep down on the inside of you and you realize what I'm praying about right now is bigger than just me. This is to bless somebody else and God has given you power. He's given you spirit. He's given you an anointing and that's why he says out of your spirit, out of your heart, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. The water is in the river to be able to bless the world. The water is in the river to bless others. Remember, God's intention in blessing you is never for the blessing to end with you. It starts there. Every river has a mouth. It's an origin. But it flows to another destination that is not the same as the origin. And so what God puts in the river is not for the river itself. It is not for the mouth of the river. It's not for the origin of the river. When God blesses you, it's not about just you. He's giving you something to flow out of you to be able to bless the world. And as the world gets blessed, now let me just tell you, think of yourself as the pipe. If the anointing has to flow through the pipe, don't you know that a residue of that oil is going to hit the pipe of where you are. It's, it's impossible for the water to flow through you and the inside of your pipes don't get wet. You're going to be lubricated, but I'm just telling you, you get blessed when God starts blessing other folks through you. If God uses you to bless somebody, you give somebody something and guess what? You, they get the gift, but you get the joy. Because you're like, Lord, I thank you. God, I, Lord, the way you bless them, the way you heal through these hands, I'm like, oh, God, that blessed me. To see that depression lift off of them, to see that demon come out of them, to see this thing break and then the marriage be restored. I mean, when God starts doing things as a result of your prayer, it gives joy to you. Joy to you, joy unspeakable and full of glory. So I'm glad. I want you to realize that this is why Isaiah 12 talks about water in the drawing, drawing water out of the wells of salvation for you. But then John chapter 7 talks about the water, rivers of living water that flow out of your heart, out of your belly, out of your innermost spirit to be able to bless others. Water is in the well of salvation for you and your household. But the water that's in the river is to bless everybody. It's to bless the world. God gives you something bigger than just you. I want you to notice this in, in Psalm 67, verse 5 through 7. Notice this. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Now, I hope you know they're not being country when they say peoples. Uh, when you say peoples, you're talking about people from different parts of the world, people of every nation and tongue, people of every kindred. He's talking about different kinds of people in the same way that you would put ES on fish, fishes. That means different species of fish, a different species of fish. So when he says, let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. This is the people of the world, of the various parts of the world, of different nations, different tongues, different ethnicities. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our God, shall bless us. I want you to see that God blesses us so that he might be known to people around the world. See, God blessed Israel so that the other nations would know him. What he did was not just about Israel. God did that so that he could put his fear in the hearts of other nations. And when they heard how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, the other nations began to fear them. They feared. So it's about when God, he wants to bless you. I want you to notice that, that God shall bless us and all of the ends of the earth shall fear him. Notice that. All of the ends of the earth shall fear him. The ends of the earth began to fear God when he blessed the children of Israel. And when God blesses you, he'll let people from other lands, people who speak other tongues, he'll let them come to say, you know, who is this God? Who is this God? that has done this for you. Tell me about him. I want to know more about him. This God that healed you, because let me tell you this, people from other places get sick too. 
And if they can hear that God is a healer, that he is a deliverer, that he is a savior, that he saved you, that he delivered you, that he set you free, it makes them hungry. It begins to pique their curiosity to want to really know this God that you have been so blessed by. And so I encourage you, ask that the Lord would use you so that his blessings in your life will become a way in which you will point others to him. When you, when, when, I think that God wants to bless you to the degree that when people look at you, that they want to know, man, where did you get that? Why is it that when other stuff goes crazy around here, you still seem to be cool? That, I mean, they need to know, I mean, why is it that I don't find you dragging other people through the mud and coming in griping and criticizing and mealy-mouthing and complaining all of the time? What is it that you have? Why you smile all the time? You know, people ought to want to know something special about what's going on in your world. How are you able to do this? And, uh, and, and it, it should make them curious about your God. Ask God to bless you in such a way that it is used to be able to point others to him. Because remember, you're blessed to bless. You're taught to teach. You're fed to feed. You're comforted to comfort. And whatever God has done to you and in you, he, he ultimately wants to do through you. Listen, I want you to realize this. Because we realize from Ephesians 1, 3 that he has blessed us, that God, the eternal father of Jesus Christ, has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Not that he's going to do it. He's already done it. It's an accomplished fact. He's already done it. He's already blessed you. He's already blessed you. Now, if somebody had died and left you money in a will that you had not claimed, you're still blessed with it. You're already endowed with it. He has left us his book, his, an Old Testament, an old will, and a New Testament or will. He's left us a will, and according to the will, this is the reading of the will. The will says that he has already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, you said, you know, it's in the will, but you're broke. And you're wondering, Lord, you know, oh God, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. But it has been willed to you. He's already willed it to you. And though it is in the will and you're sitting in your house broke and your lights are off, but it's in the will. See, so you don't measure whether or not it's in the will by whether your lights are on and how much food is on your table. Does that make sense to you? He's left this. He has already bless you. He's already blessed you. God has already blessed you. And so I want you to realize this. You are a blessing on your way somewhere to happen. Would you prophesy that to somebody? Just tell them you are a blessing on your way somewhere to happen. Turn to the other side. Tell them you are a blessing on your way somewhere to happen. Now lay your hands on yourself. Say, I am a blessing on my way somewhere to happen. Let me just tell you, you have to remind yourself, lay your hands on your chest again, prophesy. Say, I, I am an answer to somebody's prayer. Somebody has prayed for something and the answer is in you. I just want you to know God has blessed you. Listen, what's better than receiving an answer to a prayer is to be an answer to a prayer. God has made you to be a blessing. You are a blessing. I'm looking at a blessing right now. I am looking at a blessing, somebody that is blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I'm looking at blessed people. I'm looking at folks blessed to be in your right mind, blessed to be sitting in the house of the Lord on a weeknight. Blessed, 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 blessed above measure. I'm looking at blessed folks tonight. Blessed of the Lord. The Lord blessed. He has already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to give you some biblical principles about blessings, some biblical principles about blessing. Here's number one. The greatest blessings come after the greatest time of testing. The greatest blessings come after the greatest time of testing. Can anybody testify to that? 
Anybody know anything about that? I'm just telling you, the greater the test, the greater the testimony. The greater the trial, the greater the battle, the greater the victory. The greatest blessing comes after. Notice 1 Peter 5.10. After you have suffered a little while. Did it say after or before? After. After you have suffered a while. You mean the time I got to suffer? <laughs> listen, listen. But look, it's in the book. After you have suffered a while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Now, 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 I want you to get that again. I want you to see that, that after you have suffered, not before, after, after, after you have suffered, not during the trial, but after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory, he will himself restore. And when you've been in doubt, God, are you going to bless me? God, are you going to do it? Is your word going to be true? He will confirm. He will restore. He will strengthen. And he will establish you. God will establish you. Have you ever felt unsettled? And you needed God to establish you? Notice he says, after, after a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. God will do those four things. God will restore you. God will confirm you. God will strengthen you. God will establish you after you have suffered a little while. After you've suffered. After you've suffered. After you've suffered. The baby comes after the labor pains. After you've suffered a while, the strength comes after you have endured the weakness. You begin to build the muscles after you've torn them down in the gym. Uh, peace comes after the storm, after the storm. And, and, and there is the glory of the resurrection that comes after the brutal crucifixion. After you've suffered a while, God will restore you. God will restore. God will restore you. God will confirm you. God will strengthen you. God will establish you. After, 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 after. When are you going to do it, God? After you've suffered a while. God, when are you going to save this man? After you have suffered a while. When are you going to deliver this woman? After you have. When are you going to take this pain away? After you have. Then God will restore you. God will confirm you, God will strengthen you, and God will establish you that this is the person that I call. I did call you. Because you, God will tell you things and then the circumstances will make it look like, God, did I hear you right? But God said, I'll confirm you. After you suffer a while, I will confirm you and you will know it was me. I did put this dream in you. I did give you this idea. Yes, I did promise you that I was going to deliver him. I, I will restore. I will confirm. I will strengthen. I will establish. I will restore. I will confirm. I will strengthen. I will establish. God says after, 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 after. You take God at his words. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. God says after you've dealt with a little suffering, after you've gone through some instability, God says I'm going to restore you I'm gonna confirm you I'm gonna strengthen you and I'm gonna establish you I don't know whose word this is I'm just telling you that God is going to restore you that God will confirm he will confirm he will confirm he will confirm he will strengthen and God will establish you after 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 you have suffered a while because the principle is is that the greatest blessings come after the greatest time of testing is number two, blessings enrich your life. Blessings enrich your life. They enrich your life. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, when I say rich, I, I don't mean uh, that blessings are necessarily financial. You can be rich in health, rich in thoughts, rich in ideas, rich in friends, you can be rich in the peace that is in your home. Rich. See, being, being, real, being really blessed is not just having money. 
It's having peace in your home, peace in your marriage, peace in your relationship with your children, health in your body. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually about having harmony in your neighborhood. It's about having favor on your job. It's about having high achievement on, on, on standardized tests. You know, that's when, you, when you're blessed. Uh, uh, when, when you're blessed, it's about having respect. It's about having dignity. It's about being able to live with honor. When you, when you are blessed, when you are blessed. So blessings enrich your whole life. It's not just about making you rich financially, but rich in your experiences, rich in your expression toward God, rich in your testimony, rich in your authenticity, rich in your experience with other people. He will make your life rich. It's wonderful to have a rich life and a, a rich marriage and rich relationship with your children and, and with neighbors and with people on your job, that's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich the blessing because God blesses you every place that you go. Blessings follow you. Yes. Blessings follow you. Here's the third thing. Uh, believing God's word brings blessing. Just believing his word. God's greatest need is to be believed. Yes. Believing God's word brings blessing. Just believing his word. Just take God at his word. May I tell you who did it? Mary, the mother of Jesus, Luke chapter 1, verse 45, notice, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Notice, blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. She believed it brought blessing. Her believing that said, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Because she believed him, it blessed her life. Blessed is she that believed. Just believing God, just, she just took him at his word. She had no guarantee. She just took God at his word. She believed before she felt a baby bump. She believed before she saw any changes maternally happening in her body. She just believed the word before she conceived. She believed. She just believed him. And because she believed him, she got blessed by him. Just when you believe God, if you believe, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bryant. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.